So, uh, thank you all of you for coming. Uh, it's a pleasure to have the chance to explain our experience in inflatable structures. Uh, I today I will try to go on through some images of what we have done in the past in order to detect some of the weak points of the structures at the beginning and uh, present what we call the improved uh, structural design which allowed us to make very large inflatable structures. So I will try to go in all the steps of, uh, of the design process of these new kind of structures. So I will focus in uh, structures which are portable and large. This is mainly the objective of our company. So we use um, inflatable structures made by inf uh, single tubes with press pressure of air inside. This is because these kind of structures have um, some unique characteristics which are very, very light um, as the radios that we have uh, are small. We have low stresses over the textiles, so we can use very light textiles which simplify the, se the setup process, the transportation and everything. So we are very focused on this kind of structures. Just to give you some some figures of what we call a light structure. We call, uh, the, the weight for every square meter, cover square meter, square meter is between one and two kilogram for square meter. This is very, very light. Uh, here you can see some examples in the picture. The one in the left is um, um, a structure that is in Morocco, in Agadir to store materials in a, um, of, of a company that is making some buildings there. And the one in the right, it's a hangar for activities in the Amazon uh, uh, rainforest in Brazil to cover um, material and equip equipment in, uh, in places that it's very difficult to access and to set up uh, standard tents and pavilions. <coughs> so these structures are very, very simple and easy to transport because more or less every 100 square meters of uh, cover surface can fit in one cubic meter of uh, package. So the advantages of this kind of structure is enormous in some certain situations uh, and for different kind of applications. I will go in deep of which are the main applications that this can be useful. So in the past, we have, at the beginning, we were very focused on um, uh, marketing and events activities. We develop very nice structures like this one in the picture. As you can imagine, this is a very artisanal process to manufacture uh, structures like this because it's formed by a lot of patterns, small patterns, that should be stitches one to the other in order to get these very nice shapes. But the result is very impressive, as you can see. Uh, not only from our company, there are many companies doing uh, structures like these ones. And you can get very nice shapes, very functional, very light, very easy to set up, dismantle and bring to other places. So for several years in our company we were focused on this kind of applications and we have done many, many nice structures like this one for the government of Spain in order to promote the use of uh, the internet technologies in the, in the country. Then we realized that perhaps if we want to grow as a company, we need to focus in more simple shape, but that we can um, manufacture square meters of structures, of more simple structures, but more square meters. So we start to focus every time more and more to inflatable hangars or large uh, pavilions of a simple shape, but a lot of square meters covered. This is the first inflatable hangar that we have done in 2008, a lot of years ago for Lan Chile. Uh, I will use this example to present some of the disadvantages that we find of the way of that we manufacture this kind of hangars and how we improve this design. As you can see, this structure is um, it's, uh, over a platform. It's a mobile hangar, so um, it can be transported through this um, the, through this base to any place in the airport. And the structure was made by different pattern, 
that were stitches or sometimes we weld these patterns one to the other but we connect all the tubes with some stitches in order to configure some modules every three or four tubes we have a module which the idea of the module is that the weight don't exceed 300 kilograms so a team of four or five people can man can handle and for the setup we don't need any special cranes or nothing only people so basically this was the concept and then we connect one module to the other with some zippers that you can see here and as we don't trust too much in the zippers we add some connection some reinforcement in order to prevent the structure to open if one zip is broken or open this is another image of the outside of the hangar here you can see the zipper and the the security connections the weldings in this case and the stitches to connect one tube to the other this is an, a view inside you can see here the, the, the zippers so but one day we were lucky because uh, Cassidian which is Airbus uh, logistical company come to us and say okay uh, we need a very big hangar of uh, 64 meter from outside span 54 inside and they need a six-year uh, guarantee so we say we start to think okay this is a nice challenge but we cannot build with the technology that we have and the limits of this technology something like that because first we cannot trust in the stitches um, because we know that the the uh, the, the, mat the material have a very bad uh, aging and will will not resist six years in the uh, under the rain and the UVs of the sun. Then of course we have a lot of air losses, so we cannot reach the pressure, the internal pressure of the tubes that we needed to keep this very large structure uh, erected and uh, with enough stiffness to resist the wind. So we start to think, and, and then the connection, of course, we cannot use any more the zippers for a, a hangar of this side. So we start, start to think in a new structural concept, and, and we, we have some premises. The first one was that we have to weld the structure, not more stitches. Uh, this is, uh, this gives us a lot of guarantees and allowed us to increase the working pressure of the tubes. We, at the beginning, a uh, uh, stitch structure we use about between seven and 10 millibars, and we have to increase the pressure to 30 millibars, which is, it was absolutely impossible to get if we have small holes in the, in the structure. So we have to weld, we have to include some uh, strips to reinforce the material and to be able to locate the loads to the ground and to conduct this load in a better and more efficient way. So we say, okay, what happens if we separate in one side the inflatable tubes and then in the other side we, we make a 3D mesh of very strong capacity strips and we conduct the loads to the strips and we use the inflatable tubes just to keep the strips under tension in the space and to close the, um, the inner space. So we designed this kind of structures. As you can see, uh, we have an inflatable tube which are not connected one to the other are independent tubes and um, a set of, of uh, a mesh made of high tenacity strips in the space which are under pre-stressed thanks to the tension of the tubes of the inflatable tubes you can see here a picture then I will go with more details in other pictures but as you can see here are the, the tubes and all the the strips that um, are pre-stressed when you inflate to resist the external actions. So at the end we get a structure like this one. We have some ribs, what we call some ribs, which are connecting one, tu one tube to the other and going all around the structure. These strips, these ribs and the spins in the middle of the tubes are connected to the ground, are the anchorage. The inflatable tubes are not connected to the ground are simply connected to the belts. And then we have some braces which embrace every tube and are the connection between the tubes and the ribs. So finally we have some reinforcement in the base to um, 
to make a reinforcement in the place where all the loads come back to, to the ground. The materials are very simple. We have uh, for the strip high tenacity polyester, which are very easily uh, found in the market. It's a standard material. And the membranes are uh, uh, high tenacity polyester and uh, PVC coating. These are materials that all of you perfectly know. Uh, the, only po the, the only thing to recall is that we need uh, some guarantees to uh, understand the aging of these materials because if we have to ensure and to guarantee that this will be erected six or eight years, uh, we should be sure of the aging and the properties of the material in the next six or eight years. Then we make some computations. Uh, yesterday, our friends of uh, the Technical University of Munich presented some, uh, some results. We are using the virtual wind tunnel to simulate the impact of the wind over the structure. And it's very important for us to, the, to uh, estimate the deformation of the structure, not only to resist the loads, because inside should be an airplane, which is it's very dangerous is if uh, the hangar touch the airplane and the airplane fell down. So it's critical for us to have a guarantee of and to give to our customers a guarantee of how much is the deformation under extreme winds of the hangar. And to control the inner pressure of the tubes according the wind speed in order to reduce the energy consumption. So for us, the estimation of wind loads and the, um, the uh, stiffness of the structure under pressure is very important. So as a real case validation, here you can see a real wind uh, a structure under very uh, high wind situation. And here the comparison with the result that we obtain with the Kratos, the software of Simne that we use for that. So this is a very nice real test for the, for the structure and for the solver. So uh, this is uh, the result of this first uh, idea or structural concept. We manufacture this uh, large hangar for Cassidian. It's made of 12 uh, inflatable tubes. Every tube is of five meters diameter. It's very, very large. You can see the scale compared with the people that are around. Uh, we cover 4,000 square meters, and, and the inner pressure varies between 10 and 25 millibars according to the wind speed. So we have an intelligent system that, as the wind increases, the system increases the, the inner pressure of the tube to um, not to stress the structure if we don't need, and to reduce the energy consumption. But in case of strong winds, we need the structure to become more, uh, more stiffness. Okay, this is another very nice view of the hangar with the, uh, with the staff of Builder. You can see here some familiar faces. And this is an enlargement of the hangar that we have done this year. At the beginning, the hangar was made of 10 tubes of five meters, and now this year we include another 10, uh, another 10 uh, tubes. So nowadays, the length of the hangar is 120 uh, meters long by the 54 meters inner span inside. If we add the five meters every side, we have a uh, 64 meter uh, span from outside. This is a very nice picture of the inside of the, of the hangar. As you can see, it's absolutely huge. This is another example. I want to show you some details of, of the hangar. This is just to mention that nowadays we have another one of this with this technology set up in, uh, in Budapest Airport. It's a Lufthansa Technique hangar. And we are using exactly the same technology. But I introduced this uh, project because I want to show you that this is the way that, that we bring the hangar to the place. Every of this package, it's one inflatable tube. So as you can see, it's a very small uh, package. One, one of these tubes weighs 600 kilograms, including the belts, all the belts and the stitches and the, um, and the strips. And uh, it's less than three cubic meters each one. So once we extend, the first procedure is to extend the material in the, in the emplacement. 
you can have an image like this one with a lot a lot of strips around and our operators should have a very clear idea of what they are connected with what because as you can imagine if not when you inflate the hangar you can get another shape absolutely different so this is a important task another thing that small thing to present is the waterproofing of the hangar as you can see we put in the top of the hangar a waterproofing prof uh, protection because as the tubes are connected only with belts and there are some holes that the water can go through so every hangar have this uh, waterproofing uh, uh, textile or uh, membrane and we include in this uh, in this membrane some other uh, ac other uh, things for example in the case of snow we have some cables to heat this uh, this uh, membrane in order to avoid the snow to locate in the top of the hangar or we add some sensor to monitor the weight of snow the pressure of the tubes the wind speed and many many other things because we monitor the hundred percent of the variables of the hangar these are the connections to the ground as, as i mentioned uh, we connect to the ground only the the strips and not the tubes this is um, so in, in this way we, we are sure that the membrane of the tubes can be very light uh, that any strong deformation will not affect the tube and it will be uh, absolutely airtight during the operations of the hangar and all the big stresses will be located in the strips this is an image of the front door you can see here two people in the top just to see the size of this hangar um, we we invented this kind of doors are um, inflatable tubes located in the top of a cart and this cart can be open can be moved to open or close the door here you can see a picture of the carts in the side so we can open the door the the airplane can get inside and we move the car to the right position and inflate the tubes okay this is the way that we have to go to the top of the hangar uh, it's not a simple task but when you get to the top the view is fantastic you can <laughs> this is the the price uh, but as, as you, I, I wanted to include this picture to show you how this uh, waterproofing uh, uh, textile looks like in the top okay so with this we are sure that no water will get inside the hangar here i bring a, sm a, a video i will not pass all the video but some highlights oh, the problem is that i cannot see here in my oh, okay okay these are previous to the inflation process you can see here that we need a lot of staff controlling that there are no problems during the inflation once we start with the engines which is very important is to control that all the hangar is it's uh, inflating in the same time and we don't have uh, asymmetries that can make unwanted uh, effort between one side and the other the uh, the inflation process is very quickly we need only uh, 15 minutes to inflate the the hangar but we stop several times to make some controls and some me some measurement here you can see as as, as i show you in the in the other pictures the the belts and the strip to connect one tube to the other with some nice structural details as here you can see the connection between one tube and the other and in the middle this uh, 3d reticula which is under very strong uh, stresses in order to resist the winds <coughs> now you can see here how it's set, how it turned on these are the connections for the door you can see here the inflation of the main door and which is a very nice image is when we operate 
and an airplane come to the hangar and get inside. Seems that it will touch the hangar, but no, we have a lot of <laughs> a lot of space to separate the the airplane with it. Okay, I will go very quickly on uh, what we consider are very important applications for this kind of structure. The first one is our industrial applications, uh, which we think are very interesting to reduce. Uh, if, if we can reduce the operational cost in uh, offshore activities of construction and logistical companies. What we need here basically is to reduce the production cost because we have to compete with standard solutions. But when we talk about operational cost, not only the provision of the hangar, we talk about transporting the hangars, um, setting up the hangar. For example, in the case of the Amazonas jungle, uh, as you can imagine, if you have to bring to an oil and gas exploitation uh, area, which is perhaps four or five hours from any other city, you cannot bring a crane to set up a, a steel frame. So these kind of solutions are ideal for that kind of application. Another um, opportunity are the for humanitarian aids. We are not in this segment. Uh, it's a very interesting market. And the, ch the challenge here is to develop structures that can uh, not consume in energy, but generating energy. So if we can put in the top of the structure in, uh, some solar panels to generate the energy that the hangar needs and the energy that the occupancy uh, in the hangar they need, or the structure they need. Of course, aeronautical application, this is our main market right now. Um, and here, basically, what we need is to increase the lifespan of the structures. We need not only four or six years uh, of, uh, of life, we need to guarantee nine or ten years. So this will, re this will come. And finally, some disaster relief applications. And I want to recall here that uh, we think with this technology, we and including tensiority technology, we can provide a logistical solution for emer for this kind of application for basically the military um, units that comes to uh, places when there are uh, natural disasters. We p I think we presented in the last conference uh, in Munich the idea of making. Um, inflatable light, ultralight bridges made of the tensiority concept. So we explore this possibility, we make some, some prototypes, and at the end we make a proof of concept. You can see here first the first beam we have set up. We manufacture, we engineering this beam, and we set up a beam uh, that it's uh, able to resist 10 tons. Uh, the span of the beam is 40 meters. And we start to, to learn, just to learn. This is a prototype. This is a proof of concept. We set up the proof of concept in different places in Barcelona just to present this concept to the different uh, people and different uh, players of this world. And we are, I have to say that we are starting a, a collaboration with, uh, with our friend of Tensiority Solutions in order to explore if have sense to bring to the market a solution like this. For the moment, we are just doing researching and understanding which are the possibilities of this kind of technology. But if we talk about challenges and opportunities, I think we have to talk about this kind of bridges. OK. I think I was very quick in my presentation, but it was the idea. OK. Thank you very much. <laughs>